nice man had killed by gun, by knife, by Molotov cocktail and cyanide. But he also liked to experiment. Crossbows, I just popped a guy in the forehead with it. Actually, it was just <laughs> seeing if it would work. What was he doing at the time? Looking at me. Well, was he sitting down, or were you standing over him? Or? No, he actually bent down to look in the car window like I was asking him directions. I didn't know the man. Was this a contract murder, or was it something out of anger, or was it a personal thing? Neither. What, what was it? I just wanted to see if this thing would work. You mean you're experimenting on somebody? Right. Did it work? It sure did. It went halfway into his head. Kuklinski was always looking for new ways to get away with murder. In the 80s, a man who was nicknamed Mr. Softy teamed up with Kuklinski. This harmless looking ice cream vendor was in reality an army trained demolitions expert who was a violent and vicious killer. Mr. Softy was an individual by the name of Robert Prange. He used to operate a Mr. Softy truck. That's why he got the name Mr. Softy. He became friendly with Kuklinski, very friendly with him. And it is our opinion that that uh, friendship led to uh, Richard Kuklinski learning a lot about uh, killing with different types of chemicals, including cyanide. He taught me a lot, basically, but he was extremely crazy. But he would read all kinds of books on destruction and all kinds of ways to, uh, to destroy somebody. He used to go around this Mr. Softy truck. That's how he used to spot people. And get the outlay of the land, you know, where they were and easy ways. And sometimes he'd do it right from the truck. And he sold ice cream? Yes, he did. Sold Mr. Softy. He had one of those Mr. Softy right. trucks. Did and you ever see them? That's what he sold. And he sold ice cream to the little kids in the neighborhood? Yes, he did. And that's what he did. He sold. He'd go into these neighborhoods and sell ice cream to the kids and maybe kill one of their fathers. On August 9, 1984, Mr. Softy was found dead, hanging out of the driver's side seat in his Mr. Softy ice cream truck. He had been killed by multiple gunshot wounds to the head. I think Kuklinski killed him because he used him for his information, he used him for his knowledge. He probably brought him around, brought him with him on certain jobs that he did. And it was, it was time for the boss to make the decision uh, that he didn't want any more loose ends. He may have said something the wrong way to Richie, who knows, whatever it was, Kuklinski, in my opinion, made the decision to kill him. After Prongay's murder, Kuklinski was hired for a dangerous contract no one else would touch. It was here in a crowded discotheque that the cyanide killing techniques learned from Mr. Softy paid off. Couldn't get to this person. He was in a uh, disco. So I was really in a bad way because there was a time schedule involved and I happened to be 
watching these people, and there was a couple of gay people dancing and whatever, and nobody was paying them no mind whatsoever. They were walking anywhere, going anywhere because people basically don't look at gay people. But the idea came to me, yeah, try to act gay, but how in the hell am I going to get by? A 300 pound gay man, I mean, you know, that's a little bit far-fetched. So, I went to the extreme of far-fetched. I got this loudest costume you'd ever want to see on. I mean, I went full-blown gay person. Of course, maybe the other gay people are going to be pissed off at me, but I'm not saying anything bad about them. But I got this canary yellow sweater and these bright pants and uh, I got these elevated shoes, which I'm told to be good. Now I got these thing shoes on and I acted like a full-blown gay person. I mean, and I got on this thing I'm doing this like dancing bit and I get onto this thing and they got these lights and I hate those lights by the way, those strobe lights. Man, I hate those lights. You can't see good with them lights and it messes up my eyes. So anyway, I'm trying to get close to this guy. So I'm doing this crazy thing. I'm acting real swishy. I guess that's what you would call it. And I get up close to this guy and I bump into him but everybody's bumping in everybody and he had a heart attack because I had hypothermia you know when I bumped into him I I popped him with the needle What was in the needle? In his case, a heart attack. There was no doubt that Richard Kuklinski was a stone-cold killer, and most people thought that's why he was called the Iceman. But law enforcement had another reason for pinning this name on him. They called him the Iceman because to confuse the time of death, he would take his victims and put them in a freezer for long periods of time. One such victim was a man named Louis Masgay. He did too good a job on this body. After leaving the body in a freezer for over two years, he then took the body out and dumped it where it was found before it had thawed out. So when the medical examiner does the autopsy and opens the body up, he finds ice inside the body on a warm summer's day. The medical examiner says, there's something wrong here. This guy couldn't have died in the past few days. <laughs> 